Our subject today about pancreatitis. And by the end of this lecture, you should be able to identify the major pathophysiological mechanism responsible for acute and chronic pancreatitis, enumerate risk factor for acute and chronic pancreatitis, construct a differential diagnosis for patients with suspected acute and chronic pancreatitis, identify the most appropriate test to identify acute and chronic pancreatitis, describe main line of therapy of acute and chronic pancreatitis, apply acquired knowledge on virtual case scenarios and clinical situation and face-to-face -face presentation. Acute pancreatitis is an acute inflammatory disorder that involves the pancreas and prepancreatic tissues but can sometimes affect other organ systems. It is the third most common inpatient gastrointestinal diagnosis in the United States. The incidence rate of acute pancreatitis appears to be increasing without any change in the short-term or long-term case fatality rate. Causes of acute pancreatitis The most common causes of acute pancreatitis in the United States are cholesterol and alcohol abuse, which account for 70 to 80 percent of cases. Remember other causes of acute pancreatitis. Please remember the word I get smashed. I, adiabatic, cholestone, ethanol abuse, trauma, steroid, mumps virus, autoimmune disease, scrotum sting, hypertriglyceridemia uh, or hypercalcemia, endoscopic retrograde cholangiography ERCP or surgical process in the for drug. Acute pancreatitis developed, develops in response to premature activation of intracellular trypsinogen, which causes acinar cell injury, and the release of chemokines and cytokines, which result in the recruitment of neutrophil and the macrophage, resulting in inappropriate activation of pancreatic zymogen with subsequent autodigestion and inflammation. Looking to this diagram, uh, we have three three way of pathogenesis duct obstruction goal a by cholestone or chronic alcoholism lead to interstitial edema impaired blood flow and ischemia which lead to acinar cell injury another uh, another way is the acinar cell injury by alcohol or drugs trauma ischemia or viruses lead to release of intracellular pro-enzyme and lysosomal hydrolysis lead to activation of these enzymes which lead to acinar cell injury. The third pathway is differentiate defective intracellular transport by metabolic injury, alcohol, duct obstruction leads to delivery of pro-enzyme to lysosomal compartment with intracellular activation of enzyme. Again, this leads to acinar cell injury. Acinar cell injury activated to activated enzymes uh, causing interstitial inflammation and edema, proteolysis by the protease enzyme, fat necrosis by lipase and phospholipase enzyme, hemorrhage by elastase enzyme. Abdominal pain, which is typical epigastric and radiate to the typical epigastric and radiate to the back, is the most common symptoms. Increased uh, at first, it may be intense stabbing pain in the upper abdominal region. As the disease progresses, the pain may become more severe and debilitating. In case of severe pancreatitis, patient can present with fever, tachycardia, tachycardia tachypnea together with signs parallel to presence of systemic inflammatory response and organ dysfunction. Patients with severe acute pancreatitis uh, can be diagnosed as having SARS or systemic inflammatory response and organ dysfunction if his temperature is more than 38, respiratory rate is more than 24 per minute, heart rate is more than uh, 90, uh, 90 beat per minute, white blood cell count more than 
12,000 or uh, more than 10% or events which arises in response to pro-inflammatory mediators can present with fever, tachycardia, tachypnea, or combination of these findings. Other examination findings include respiratory distress, crackles or absent breath sound on lung uh, auscultation, cold extremities, impaired mental status, decreased vowel sound, abdominal distension, oligoria and anuria, colon sign, periumbilical ecomosis, and the great turner sign flank ecomosis are rare but can be seen in cases of acute pancreatitis with hemorrhage and are associated with increased mortality. Ultrasonography is useful for evaluating biliary etiology and excluding acute cholecystitis or hepatic abscesses. Contrast enhanced CT is the single most important test in diagnosis acute pancreatitis, determining its severity and assessing for complication. Finding of interstitial acute pancreatitis typically seen on CT, on CT scan. Uh, enlargement of the pancreas, enlargement of the pancreas and edema, heterogeneous pancreatic parenchyma, peripancreatic fat necrosis and a peripancreatic fluid collection. CT scan, this CT scan picture shows interstitial acute pancreatitis. There is a uniform enhancement uh, of the pancreatic parenchyma here, uh, indicating that pancreatic perfusion is preserved. Benign, there is a benign right renal cyst. Acute pancreatic necrosis typically appear as focal or diffuse areas of non-enhanced pancreatic parenchyma. This CT showing necrotizing acute pancreatitis. Here, pancreatic perfusion is diminished on contrast enhancement. Magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography MRCB is equivalent to CT in its ability to detect necrosis and determine severity of acute pancreatitis. It offers unparalleled visualization of the pillory and pancreatic duct. Uh, gadolinium should not be used uh, in patients with renal impairment. Diagnosis of acute pancreatitis is usually made when there is a history of acute abdominal pain and a threefold elevation in serum amylase or lipase or both, or an abnormal abdominal, arthrist, abdominal CT scan demonstrating changes consistent with acute pancreatitis. Indication for more extensive evaluation if patients older than 40 years have had a single episode and patients who have had two or more episodes of idiopathic pancreatitis, a contrast enhanced CT scan should be part of the initial evaluation. If the CT scan is negative, a reasonable and safe strategy is combination of MRCP and endoscopic ultrasound if available. Assessing severity in patients with acute pancreatitis is essential for appropriate triage and management, as patients with severe disease are at greater risk of this. The criteria of severe acute pancreatitis uh, were defined as organ failure or at least of at least one organ system. Uh, systolic blood pressure less than 90 mm mercury, oxygen saturation less than 60 mm mercury, Creatinine more than 2 mg per deciliter after dehydration and gastrointestinal bleeding more than 500 ml 24 hours and the presence of local complications such as necrosis, pseudocyst and abscess in the pancreas. Early prediction of severity at 48 hours included 3 or more ransom signs and an Apache 2 score of 8 or higher. Please Search for these two score ransom signs and Apache to score until the next face-to-face -face session. This table, <coughs> this table show uh, some causes 
of idiopathic unexplained acute pancreatitis diagnosed by endoscopic evaluation, either ERCB or endoscopic ultrasound, uh, ampullary lesion, uh, colticolysis, uh, chronic pancreatitis, gallbladder, microlysis or sludge, pancreas diaphysia, pancreatic cancer, sphincter of oil dysfunction. Abdominal pain of acute pancreatitis should be differentiated from other causes of acute abdominal pain like perforated viscous, cholecystitis, bowel obstruction, vascular occlusion, especially mesenteric venous occlusion, renal colic, inter, uh, inferior myocardial infarction, pneumonia, diabetic ketoacidosis, and duodenal ulcer. Complication of acute pancreatitis uh, including pancreatic pseudocyst formation, abscess formation, and pancreatic ascites from pancreatic duct disruption. Also, bleeding from esophageal varices can occur from splenic vein obstruction or pseudoaneurysm formation associated with a pseudocyst or pancreatic necrosis. Less commonly seen complications include pancreatic encephalopathy, subcutaneous fat necrosis, or splenic complications such as subcapsular hematoma. Pseudocyst was defined as collection of pancreatic fluid enclosed by non epithelialized wall that occurred due to trauma, acute pancreatitis, or chronic pancreatitis. If this cyst is infected, an abscess is formed. Abscess also can be formed if an uh, uh, area of necrosis undergoes liquefaction and becoming secondarily infected. Pancreatic pseudocyst can only be, be trained surgically uh, or endoscopically if it causing uh, abdominal pain or uh, obstruction. This is the picture of uh, pancreatic pseudocyst by endosonar, and here we can use uh, sonar guided drainage of the pseudocyst. Uh, surgical removal of the cyst if this huge cyst uh, like that. An occlusion of this cyst showing a fistula uh, between uh, the cyst and uh, a pancreatic duct. Pancreatic uh, ascites uh, should be uh, treated conservatively uh, or surgically if it is not responding to conservative surgery. Treatment of patients with acute mild pancreatitis is just by simple supportive care uh, which include bowel rest, uh, intravenous hydration with crystalloid and analgesia, stop oral intake. Oral intake can be resumed once the patient is pain free in the absence of parenteral analgesia, has no nausea or vomiting, and with normal bowel sound. First, the patient uh, uh, will, will, give, uh, will give him a clear, full liquid diet. Then, after recovery of the acute attack, a low-fat solid diet is allowed. In case of patients with gallstone pancreatitis, and because uh, this patient has increased risk of recurrence, uh, therefore, following recovery from mild pancreatitis, performing laparoscopic cholecystectomy during the same admission. If the patient is not a surgical candidate, uh, so, we can perform an endoscopic biliary sphincterotomy. In patients with severe pancreatitis, acute pancreatitis, it is reasonable to start antibiotic uh, uh, in patients who appear septic while awaiting the results of culture. Once the cultures are negative, the antibiotic should be discontinued to minimize the risk of developing fungal superinfection. Bare cutaneous aspiration of necrosis with gram stain and culture should generally not be performed until at least 7 to 10 days after establishing a diagnosis of necrotizing pancreatitis, and then only if there are ongoing signs of possible pancreatic infection such as sustained leukocytosis, fever, or organ failure. Urgent ERCB within 24 hours is indicated in patients who have severe acute biliary pancreatitis with organ failure or cholangitis or both. Elective ERCB 
with sphincterotomy be considered in patients with persistent in, uh, incipient biliary obstruction. Those seem to be poor candidate for a cholecystectomy and those in whom there is strong suspicions of bile duct stone after cholecystectomy, DRCB also is indicated for pancreatic ductal disruption that occur as part of the inflammatory process and result in pre-pancreatic fluid collection.